So, now it's your first uh, sort of museum exhibition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How do you put together this show? How do you select the paintings according to the space, of course? Mm -hmm. um, the show was... I think the paintings were selected... Um, it was like making a mixtape, you know? I just selected paintings that I thought and formed and fed off one another uh, uh -huh. with some, with, uh, what am I trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> Mixtape. <laughs> Mixtape, right. It's like a, uh -huh. a greatest hits, you know. Uh, greatest, yeah, but it's more the, I mean, even if you, your career is not that long, but still you've been doing painting for a bit of, a bit of time already. Mm -hmm. So it's not greatest it's it's more like the recent sure yeah it, for the the exhibition focuses on uh, work from the past five years with a few um, a few older works mm -hmm. included and um, it's sort of uh, heavy on the um, the oil paintings I think I wanted to kind of um, focus on that body of work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and, uh, so the selection, you selected a number of paintings and a bunch of drawings as well, and everything was exhibited. So the, the, the choice and the number of works selected was perfectly uh, filling the space. Mm -hmm. So it was good, uh, a good prediction how to deal with the number of paintings in order to, to fill the space. That Without being too crowded or impeccable planning on that. <laughs> so that's good. So yeah. and uh, as a as a first uh, institution exhibition, you didn't want to play the retrospective or did kind of no, thing no. that's I, I thought rather than sort of present it chronologically and try to give a fair amount of space to different bodies of work that it would be I mean it's more of an intuitive selection really mm -hmm. and um, and it's funny because it show let's say two sides of your persona the painter and it still smell the oil painting mm -hmm. because it takes a bunch of time to to dry the mm -hmm. oil painting <laughs> oil paint and also your uh, sort of collector of comics because in your drawings and in some of the painting mm -hmm. it's a some kind of sub images that coming and popping up out of the canvas or, or, or out of the, the paper. It's more explicit. The figurative element is in the drawings and in the paintings. It's, it's buried or sublimated. Colors, mm -hmm. shapes, mm -hmm. more abstract. So the side, this side of the comic side, is not really present. Mm -hmm. But when you see the drawing, so it's balanced, uh, this, this aspect. Yeah, yeah, I think the drawings also function as uh, kind of a key in a way, mm -hmm. you know, because the imagery is, like I said, tends to be buried in the painting, and I think the drawings might help decipher some exactly. of that, or so at least a, lend a... It's a key also yeah. to, to look at the painting as well. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, there's one thing that was quite a surprise for us, because we when you see an image of the painting, you never seen the backside of the painting. Mm -hmm. But when you deal with the actual paintings, when you take them out of the crate, you see the backside of the painting, and the backside of the painting is already... It's another painting. It's another <laughs> painting. So, and then you also understand some, some type of process, which is to use the, the back to have the a sort of image coming through mm -hmm. the canvas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you know, I'd mentioned to you earlier that um, that, that was kind of a byproduct of just being a frugal guy, you know, and, and working with this and thinking, mm -hmm. you know, I'd work on uh, one side of the canvas and it would become sort of too muddled or... Uh, uh, and then turn it over and, and work on the other side. Mm -hmm. And then there was this kind of, uh, well, what happens is the oil paint bleeds through the raw mm -hmm. canvas and creates a sort of ghost yeah. mark. Uh -huh. which so, how do you deal with this ghost idea? Because there's many ghosts in your work. 
in yeah. some way. Well, I think the, the abstract expressionist, which is something that any American artist seems to have to deal with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there's the ghosts are more a kind of friendly ghost, I would say. The ghosts are welcome. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, painting has a long history, uh -huh. and so when you paint, you invite. Uh, all of these ghosts, so to speak, Oof. into the studio, and you kind of have to reckon with with the whole gang, you know. Uh -huh. But some try to resist, and not they try to change yeah, their way. Some, pretending, some are maybe you know. uh, less welcome than others, but uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, I think uh, I don't. I'm I'm not one of these painters who resists or who. Truly. I think that art is made. Um, you build on top of the foundation uh -huh. that's been laid by all these other practitioners yeah, through the yeah. years. And we started to, you say you introduced this as a mixtape, mm -hmm. so you're also a man of music. Hmm. How do you <laughs> deal with this, or is totally something no, that's I nothing mean, to do? No, I haven't, I, I'm a retired musician, <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't played music in a long time. <laughs> But it's still something that it's, it's calm for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's my interests uh, over the past few years, uh, I tend to listen to really sort of uh, obnoxious jazz music. And uh -huh. I think that that, you know, everything, as an artist, you're always looking for material. And I think that that um, has influenced my work yeah. as well. But and when just, you paint, you listen to music? Yeah, sometimes. Uh -huh. you know, some, I think I tend to listen, and then if things really get going, yeah. the music stops and, and, you, and you concentrate. Because uh -huh. I remember Farstrom said he used to paint while, watch, while watching television. <laughs> Which I haven't tried that. <laughs> requires. <laughs> Yeah, um, eh, to each his own, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's it. That's it. All right. Perfect.